Okay, the royal cousins, uh, George, Charlotte, uh, Louis, uh, Archie, Lilibet. What's going on? Are they going to get together? So we'll take a look. I hope you like the video. If you do, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So this is another of your question. This is uh, Larney Irvine asks, uh, what about the Sussex uh, children? And I had to kind of, kind of stretch it out to say, what about George and Charlotte and uh, Louis and Archie and Lilibet? What about all of that? You know, these cousins, I can imagine these boys, imagine their kids would grow up together, be in each other's hair and each other all the time. So what about the kids? Well, there's not much to say about these uh, royal cousins. I mean, they haven't lived much life yet. But uh, what I can do is I can tell you when they were born, right down to the time, what astrological sign they are, the hospital they were born in, and how old they are right now. And so when you think of the Cambridge uh, family and the, and the uh, Sussex uh, family, uh, we thought that these would be two happy families kind of growing up together. And, together. and um, instead what we have is this. So uh, for uh, the first child, the first royal cousin of uh, William and uh, Harry, um, not their cousins, but their children that will be cousins. You know what I mean. Anyway, Prince Alec George Alexander Louis was born on July 22nd, 2013. So he's a Cancer, and he was born at 1624, I guess that's British Standard Time, BST, at St. Mary's Hospital, London, and as of this video, he's eight years old. Now, Princess Charlotte Elizabeth Diana was born on May 5th, 2015. So she's a Taurus. And uh, she was born at 8.34 a.m. British Sta Standard Time, I suppose, BST, at uh, St. Mary's Hospital, London. And as of this video, she is six years old. And uh, then we have uh, Prince Louis Arthur George, who was born on April 23rd of 2018, so he is also a Taurus, like his sister, and uh, born at St. Mary's Hospital, London, um, at 11 a.m., and let's see, uh, yep, and uh, British Standard Time, BST, and um, in uh, St. Mary's Hospital, London, and as of this video, he is three years old. Now, for the Sussexes, we have uh, Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, and he was born on May 6th of 2019, so he also is a Taurus. And uh, he was born at 526 uh, BST, British Standard Time, uh, at uh, Portland Hospital, London. So as of this video, he is two years old. And then finally, we have a little bit uh, Diana Mountbatten Windsor, who was born on the on June 4th, 2021. So she's a Gemini. Might serve her well. And she was born at 11.40 Pacific Daylight Time at Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital in California, USA. And as of this video, she is four months old. So that's the kids. And let's see what the cards uh, can tell us about that. So this is one of my all-time favorite uh, decks. So this is the Smithwaite uh, Tarot Deck, the Centennial Edition. And uh, there's two boxes here, and I'll explain what happened. Is uh, when I was ordering uh, uh, this uh, deck, um, I think I think it was Amazon. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it wasn't clear that that one of the things I was ordering was just a deck of cards, and the other thing I was ordering was a commemorative set. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about them separately. So the cards themselves are terrific. So these are, as you may have heard me say, if you've watched some of my videos and watched me use these cards, uh, these cards 
are the um, supposed to be the uh, most true to the original artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith. This is her initial, Pamela Coleman Smith. Uh, th these are the closest to her original artwork or interpretation that she and um, and uh, uh, Waite uh, came to agreements on for the way they would be depicted. Before I turn these over, I'm going to tell you. So one of the things I love about cards is when you, there's something special you can use the cards for, a special way you can identify with the cards that's only secret to you. Maybe I shouldn't like that, but I do like that. For instance, uh, these cards, you can tell from the back of these cards whether they are upright or or whether they are inverted before you flip them over. And here's how. In this uh, little um, uh, flourish here, uh, it's almost a rose in a rose. It reminds me a little bit of the Tudor rose, but it's, it's not quite that. But uh, if you are looking at this card, the back of this card, and you see this little leaf is, is sort of pointing in front of this signature, then you know that this card, when you flip it over, is going to be upright. However, if you see that the leaf is pointing behind the signature, you know that this card is going to be inverted. So see, at quick glance, it's not very obvious to you. But once you look at it for a minute and you know that secret, now you know what's going to happen when you turn this card over. So let's use an example. This one is pointing um, before the signature, so we can see that this card is in the upright position. This one is pointing after the signature, and you can see that it's in the inverted position. So, so there you go. Now, the cards themselves are great. I mean, I love the coloring of the cards. They've got kind of a, a grayish, um, a brownish gray overtone, almost a misty, kind of a London fog kind of a feel to the overall. It's like someone painted the cards and then went back and did a treatment on them to make them look kind of... So I'm not, I don't know if that's how Pamela Coleman Smith uh, created the art. I haven't seen her original art for this, obviously. Um, I'm sure some people have. But, um, but that's what's great about these cards. It kind of gives them a built-in patina that's not real. You know, it's fake, but it still makes them nice and mystical. And so uh, that's what's interesting about these cards. Now, the um, at first I was disappointed that I had ordered two um, sets of the same cards, but then um, I understood that it was a good thing, and I'll show you why that is. Okay, so now this is the commemorative set of the Pamela Coleman Smith uh, artist of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, uh, featuring the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition deck, which is this. So uh, it comes in this amazing amazing container. I mean, I can't even really call it a box. It's, it's like a beautiful showcasing a lifetime of artwork by Cam Pamela Coleman Smith. And um, so it's really cool. And wait till you see how it works. So you open this treasure chest up and you've got this beautiful uh, finish here and you've got wonderful little tabs where you can pull back the, uh, the covers and see what's inside. And what is inside is a, a pack of the cards. Uh, and in truth, what's happened is um, these were the cards that were wrapped up inside this box, and uh, these cards uh, came in that box. But um, I got this first, and so I wanted to use the cards, and so I opened it up, and oh, look at that. I don't like that. This has to be tucked down in there, so there's a couple things that aren't perfect. But uh, so I took the cards out of here, opened them up, started using them, and then the other cards came, and I realized, oh, well, I can make this a complete set if I put these in here. What's in here? Of course, you have the cards, and uh, then you have a nice little bag uh, to keep them in. If, uh, if that's how you're going to keep your cards, and so many people do. But uh, I've just chosen to try to leave these cards in kind of a pristine condition. And then on this side is where all the treasure happens. The first thing you have is this booklet, The Artwork and Times of Pamela Coleman Smith, Artist of the, Tarot, Tarot of the Rider Waite Tarot Deck by Stuart R. Kaplan and Lynn uh, Arjo, I suppose. So this is who wrote this book. In this book, it tells you all about, uh, you know, not all about, but it's, 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 it's a very good information about Pamela Coleman Smith. It's a lot of her art that's not related to tarot and explanations of how that art came to be. I mean, this is just a fascinating book, and I love it. I love it a lot. So there's that. The next thing that was in here, are these are actually postcards, okay? So these are postcards, and all of these are the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. So, uh, and then this book talks about these postcards and why they come to be, and they all have a very interesting uh, story. So, which I won't go into now, but if you think you'd like to know, you should order these cards. So, very interesting uh, stuff here. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, next thing you're going to get is you get some uh, larger pieces that uh, this is Pamela Coleman Smith, who I understand like to be called Pixie uh, as a nickname, and she's a lovely person. This um, is uh, someone that she knew, a, a stage uh, actress at the time, and um, and there's even a little uh, message down here. That the name of this person is Mistress Page, and then you are a you are Mary, so am I. Ha ha, uh, Ellen Terry. So uh, I'm not sure now, but the, the book explains all of this to you. 
Then you get, uh, this is an example of just some black and white work she'd done for, for, I don't know what it doesn't tell you on here, but it does tell you in the book. And then this is some more examples of what she might have done for playbills or uh, other ways. You know, artists have to make a living, so they use their talent of making art to uh, sell and, and do other things. So love, love, love everything that came with this. And... Um, Amazing. Now, the final thing, and I've lost a little uh, ribbon, but also this uh, has a ribbon here that, that helps you pull everything out, which is so smart and so good. I don't know who thought of it first, but it's a great uh, use of that. And then you have here the actual uh, pictorial key to the tarot. So some of you may have seen me using uh, this book, which is the pictorial key to the tarot by weight. And uh, so this is just another uh, representation of that, but just in a different book. And it all comes in here. The one thing that you're missing here, I don't think the cards are in this book. No, the pictures of the cards uh, aren't in here, but it's terrific. Everything else is true to that first book. Uh, this one, however, which I bought separate from an uh, online bookstore, uh, does have uh, depictions of the cards in it, as you can see. So that's very useful. I use that all the time. So very handy to have. And then finally, like so many of these uh, decks, this gives you some examples of some spreads you can use and how you might read them. And so everything, everything, everything about this um, this package uh, is exactly um, the best that you'd want to get in a, in a, in a gift. I've got, this is the one little misgiving here. Maybe I'll, I'll work on that later. But um, so nice. So that's been the tour of these cards. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Well, something interesting happened um, when I started this read. Actually, my intention was to start with another deck of cards, and um, I'll show you what they were. The Good Tarot. So I pulled these up, I uh, had them in the video, and uh, was trying to shuffle them. They didn't want to shuffle, they were very difficult. And I started the read, and just the cards, uh, I just drew five cards, and the first card was just didn't make any sense whatsoever. So, I, and I had a hard, hard time getting those cards to shuffle. So I decided that that was not the right deck, and I, um, did a little meditation and I came to uh, these cards which uh, are what we're going to use and these seem to be working much better than those. So um, here's what we've got. These five uh, kids, uh, uh, George, Charlotte, Louis, Archie and uh, Lilibet, you know, they're just babies. So there's not uh, much that we can uh, draw, I don't think. Uh, regarding their little lives and their thoughts. Um, they haven't lived. So what I want to do is just try to see if we can take a peek into what their relationships might be like. And so the first question I want to ask, and uh, thank you, Larney Irvine, if that's how your name's pronounced, I hope. I'm not messing it up. Um, the first question I want to ask, and there's three, is uh, will the royal cousins know each other? And uh, I don't know if it's appropriate to refer to Harry's kids as royal, but you know, I think that um, the cards know what I'm talking about. So, will the royal cousins know each other is the first thing I want to discuss. And I would just want to go through their names so that hopefully these cards really try to kind of get in tune with whatever energy is guiding those children. Um, I do want to say this, that, uh, you know, Megan's relationship with her uh, extended family and even her half siblings is just not good. And I can imagine there's, uh, whether she knows it or not, perhaps some guarded uh, energy on her part uh, regarding the relationships with her kids, especially if she considers that uh, her children have been kind of put in a, they are, you know, second to uh, William's children, but, you know, wouldn't a mother be protective of that? And then, um, but then that's countered by Harry and William's really terrific uh, upbringing where they, I think they were just each other's um, company for so long. Uh, of course, that's uh, being tested. But uh, so now let's focus in on the children, Charles, George, Louis, Archie, and Lilibet. Charles, George, Louis, Archie, and Lilibet. Charles, George, Louis, Archie, and a little bit. Okay. Now, do the royal cousins right now, do the royal cousins know each other? And there's five kids, so I'm going to take five cards. 
So do the Royal Cousins, as of right now, do they know each other? Now we've got some babies in there, so that's kind of a big, a big ask, but we'll just see. Do the Royal Cousins, you know, know each other? Are they acquainted? I'm going to guess that they probably are, but let's just ask that question just to kind of whet the, the appetite and get things going. The signifier card for this is the Magician. You know, the Magician um, is is the uh, card of the Royal Suite. He's the first card uh, in the Fool's journey. The Fool, of course, is number zero. He starts off on his journey, and the first thing he meets is the Magician. Much like these children, they're just starting out on their journeys, and uh, their magic is their parents. And then, of course, all the magic of the facility of the world around us with Internet and uh, electronic communication. The Magician has everything that he needs on the table in front of him to, to make things happen. And, uh, and so do these children. So um, the signifier card of this question, uh, do the royal cousins know each other? Look, they've got lots of tools in front of them to help facilitate that. Let me get a drink of water. Okay. <clears throat> the challenge to that though, Ah, the challenge to this is the Nine of Pentacles. You know, the Nine of Pentacles is really being awash in just everything that you need. Um, notice the, the luxurious uh, uh, overindulgence of all the fabric involved in this, in this woman's dress. She has the latest um, toy of the day, which would be a falcon. She's got money growing on, you know, the bushes around her. So the, actually the challenge then to, ha to having all this magical access somehow... Uh, is about um, the plenty of this uh, this uh, woman here, this Nine of Pentacles. Um, so what does that mean? So we've got Harry and Meghan trying to build up their bounty for the future, and we've got Harry and um, Kate uh, really ensconced in all their wealth. So maybe that's a clue to how this is a challenge to all of this. I'm not sure. The base of this reading then is the Queen of Cups. You know, the Queen of Cups is just, you know, this looks like Diana. Tell me that doesn't look like Diana. The Queen of Cups, you know, cups are emotion, passion. Uh, it can even be obsession, but uh, it's fraught with lots of emotions. And uh, this Queen of Cups is just right here, right in the middle of it. And I always like to point out that on the seat of this throne, there's a little imp you can see him down here, maybe just ready to stick up his little hand and cause a little bit of uh, commotion. This cup of compassion isn't open. She's holding it. It looks like she's considering offering it out. It may be being offered up, but the cap hasn't been taken off. So the base of this reading is that Queen of Cups. It looks like Diana to me. The past of this reading is the Ace of Swords. You know, this is justice. This is truth. This is fairness. These are rules and it's action. So, um, this Ace of Swords is what's, in, is what's in the past here, and I think this kind of represents all the justice and truths that these two individual families are attributing to their uh, situation regarding, um, you know, everything that's happened recently. The uh, Cambridges have their set of truths and their perceived justices, just as the Sussexes have those same uh, uh, boundaries, really, is what those are. Uh, the sky this reading then is the King of Cups. Okay. And the King of Cups, he is, um, I almost want to say in contrast to the Queen, but actually in concert with the Queen. Uh, the King is completely in control of all his emotions. You see, he's afloat on a sea of uh, compassion, uh, I think in this case. And um, so I'm not sure who this might represent. I want to say perhaps the fathers, Harry and, and William, but they are certainly fully. They've got a firm grip on their actions uh, with this wand or the staff and then with their cups, this big cup in this other uh, hand. And the king will decide when he's going to dole these out. Uh, the king will decide. Okay. So I'm going to take one more card off the stack to finish uh, this first question, which is do the royal cousins know each other? And that is the king of pentacles. Value. There's a lot of value in this and uh, these families know that. Okay, so we'll go through the question one more time. Do the Royal Cousins know each other? They're represented by the Magician. The Magician has everything on the table in front of him to make all of this happen. And for me, that's the modern technology that we have that can keep these uh, families, the children, uh, communicative. Uh, they're challenged by this Nine of Pentacles, which is, she's just awash in wealth and privilege. And um, I can see where this is a challenge on both sides. Uh, William and Kate awash in the privilege of their responsibilities. And then, which could be a challenge to these connections. And then the uh, Sussexes, which are just a wash in um, their um, um, quest to achieve all of this uh, stability. 
So we have that. In the base of this reading, we have the Queen of Cups. For me, this is Diana. She's holding on to that cup of compassion. She's ready to, to, to hand it out. The past of this reading is the Ace of Swords. Swords of truth, justice, uh, rules, law, ha action perhaps. And so that's the past of this reading. The King of Cups is really at the top here. He's the one who's going to decide when this gets doled out. And then the King of Pentacles is the likely outcome. Is that, And I'm going to say that this represents the worth that this question has. It's a valid question. Do the royal children know each other? I, I don't know that we have an answer to that. I'm going to take one more card only and see if it helps us to define that. But at least this tells us how important this issue is and how complicated this issue is. So one more card. Do, do the royal children know each other? And we, oh, of course, there it is. Just like I said, this is the nine of wands. Wands are action, movement, plans. And uh, we can see that this uh, fellow is really embattled. There's lots of issues to overcome. He's got a plan in his hand. And it looks like he's really beat up. But once he gets his breath, then he's looking at these plans as to how he's going to challenge that. So I don't know how well they know each other, but it's on the minds of those people who are making those decisions. Okay? So there we go. Um, that's the first question. Um, the second question I have here is, will the cousins grow up together? Will these cousins grow up together? You know, you can grow up together while you're separate. Uh, again, because of all the connection that we have, um, it's very possible for these kids to, if they know of each other, to inquire of each other and want to be in each other's lives. Uh, the royal children of William and Kate certainly have a little more um, knowledge of the existence of their cousins across the pond, and more so than certainly the Sussex children. And um, so that can create a divide right there. I mean, if you're a child who knows of your little cousins and wants to um, understand why you're not seeing more of them that would for me would be George and Charlotte um, but if your cousins don't are not so aware and don't realize what they're missing out of that can be seen as indifference uh, to young minds so will the cousins grow up together again we'll go with five cards and see what happens one two three four five and these five cards for me uh, represent the five children. Uh, I mean, not literally, but uh, just because we have five children, five cards seems appropriate. The signifier card for this question, will the cousins grow up together even though they're apart? Okay, Ace of Swords. I love it when the cards repeat because there's 78 cards in that deck, so the, the chance of this happening is is it's, it's a better chance that we get something different than we draw the same cards again. So truth, justice, rules. Uh, uh, there are truths here, there's justice here, and there are rules that have to be obeyed. So that's the signifier card uh, for this, uh, this draw. The challenge to that, ah, look at this. We, we have across the pond, look at this, we have a river of emotion keeping this person from that castle over there. There's a bridge that he can travel to to make that journey, but he doesn't even seem to be thinking about it. He's just thinking about what he's lost. Cups are emotions, uh, compassion, uh, could even be obsession. But uh, so this fella is really uh, mourning uh, over what he's lost. Look, these are almost the children. These are almost the three children that have been lost to the Sussexes, and these are almost the two children that belong to the Sussexes. So, and I'm getting better at pronouncing that difficult plural uh, Sussex. <laughs> so, so this five of cups is really uh, mourning over something you've lost. Uh, it shows us that there's a bridge that can that can bring us together. But you know what? It's the bridge is a little bit of a trek. The castle is certainly a little bit of a trek after that. So this is not. This is not. Uh, this doesn't tell me that they're going to grow up together so much. Certainly not right away. There's a journey that has to happen here. The um, well, this is a beautiful card to get for this because this is the Ten of Pentacles is a happy family. This is almost can be um, familial wealth. Uh, I like to think of the Pentacles as value, and we've got uh, this castle in the background here. And if you've seen pictures of uh, the, um, uh, of course, uh, Kensington or uh, Windsor Castle, and also of the Montecito Mansion that Harry and Meghan uh, live in, this can be representative of either one of those. And so this Ten of Pentacles at the base of this readings tells me that this is a, a sturdy, important uh, base for this reading. This Ten of Pentacles, familiar wealth, familiar value, uh, that's important.
The past of this reading is the Ace of Wands. I love this because this represents actions. You know, uh, wands are actions, uh, movement, fire, uh, making something happen, plans. Look how fruitful this wand is. It's just got sprouts coming up all over it. It's a great big hand offering this this uh, Ace of Wands up, and this is in the past. So I'm going to say that the actions, the plans, the movement, the fruitful situations that are going on right now on both sides of the water, and again, we've got separated by the water. It looks like a castle in the distance, even further though in the distance that we have now. So this is the past, and so this of both families determining their plans, okay? That's what's in the past. In the sky of this reading is a knight of pentacles. You know, the knight in the royal suite is the guy, you know, when the, if the king uh, tells the knight, listen, I want you to go do this, the knight's going to take his charge, he's going to take that value that the king gave him, and he's going to go make something happen. But this knight, look at him, he's steadfast, he's on a sturdy, uh, uh, strong steed, but he's standing his ground. He's got a, a light uh, grasp on the value that he's been charged with, but he's really considering uh, what's going to happen before he starts to move forward. This is both brothers. Okay, and then um, that's five. So we're going to take one more card for the static cross. What's the likely outcome of this question? Will the cousins grow up together? Look at that. It comes back to this, uh, uh, and I love when the cards repeat. It just tells me that the cards are playing the game with us. This Nine of Pentacles, for me, again, like I said, this is having everything that you want, everything you need, plus more. Okay, look at just this. In, in the period that this card is drawn in, for a woman to be clad in all of this luxurious fabric would have been a display of her wealth. You know, a simple woman would have just the simple uh, dress that she needs to go about her chores during the day. This woman is not going to lift a finger. She's not going to sweat. And so I think that at the point when there's some stability in the in the value of these two families for the Sussexes, I think it has to be their actual monetary value. And for the Cambridges, I think it's when they feel like they've come into their own. So will the cousins grow up together? I think it's in the horizon. I do think it's in the horizon. So I like that. Okay. Then we'll go to the last question is, will the cousins be friends? It's the last question that I've written. I don't know that it'll be the last question that I ask. It may be. But we'll just see uh, how the cards inspire um, this uh, session to go on. So will the cousins be friends? Will the cousins be friends? This is the Empress. You know, the Empress is, is uh, the mother figure. She's all-knowing. She's fruitful. And if this were the only card that I drew for this question, this would be a very strong yes. Okay? So will the cousins be friends? Let's see how this comes out. Uh, in this story. Will the cousins be friends? Will these cousins, the Cambridge children and the Sussex children, will they be friends? Again, I'm going to take five cards off the top to represent the five children. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, will these children, these cousins, will they be friends? That's a lot to ask because you've got five personalities. As they grow older, they're all going to go in different directions. They're going to have different ideas about uh, each other and their relatives. So will uh, these five cousins be friends? The uh, signifier card of this is the Queen of Wands. This, you know, wands are actions, uh, motion, movement, uh, planning, uh, getting things done. And look at this queen. She's holding a beautiful sunflower in one hand, which is, uh, you know, this is this is life giving. Um, this uh, black cat uh, shows us a little bit of caution here uh, for me. And I want to remind you that, you know, every tower reader has uh, meanings for their cards that are individual to them. Another reader may look at a card and give a reading that means something completely different or it comes off in a different way. But for me, this Queen of Wands, this is an action. This is a plan, very strong, nearly the top. And look at this. I'm drawn to this uh, uh, emblem up here of these uh, lions. Isn't that the... Um, the, are the, these lines featured in the royal, uh, uh, what do they call that, standard? So, the Queen of Wands. I don't know who this is. It may not be no one in particular, but it seems like this um, action as to whether the cousins will be friends will be uh, guided from the royal side of this, okay? The, the monarchical side. The challenge to that, uh, look at that victory. Love that. So the uh, uh, Six of Wands is victory. And um, so this um, fella, he's wearing a, a laurel wreath, 
the crown. He's got the uh, uh, symbol of victory on this plan, this action, these movements uh, forward. So again, if these are the only two cards I drew, that's that's an eventual yes. Um, the uh, base of this reading then is the fool. And remember, I told you that the fool is off on a journey. All of this fool is representing all of these children. These children are just starting off on their on the journey. This fellow has got a youthful, playful uh, attitude about him. And um, yeah, so I will say that this, the base of this reading is in fact these children. The past of this reading, look at that, is the four of swords. Uh, swords are truth for me, truth, justice, rules. Uh, uh, and this uh, knight here is how we usually presume that this is a knight. Apparently uh, back in the day, a knight might have his sarcophagus made up well in advance of when he might ever need it because you don't know when he's going to go out on a, on a, 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 a project and not come back. And, uh, and uh, this is the night laying down, taking a rest, making some plans, cautious to get up because he could be in peril if he gets up too soon. And he's got his sword at his side for protection. So in the past of this, we've got some caution, some stepping back, some waiting, some considering uh, that's going to guide uh, all of this. Okay, in the sky of this reading, we have temperance. Yeah, this has to be a balanced, a carefully thought out. You know, this temp, this angel of temperance, she's got one foot in the in the uh, water of uh, emotion, and she's got another foot on the solid ground, and she's trying to temper the situation uh, appropriately. So I love that this is an angel. Um, you know, if you want to say that this is Diana uh, up in the sky, I think that's that's perfectly fine. Okay, and then the likely outcome of this, as to will uh, the cousins be friends, is the Page of Wands. So the page is the least, uh, you know, effective of the court cards. You know, if you if the, if a page comes into the court with a message, which is kind of how pages were used, um, they're bringing a message to the court. They're turning it over for the court to decide what's going to happen. So this is a page of action, of planning. Uh, it's a fruitful uh, idea, as you can see here, with these sprouts coming off. And so this is just in the beginning. These children are just babies, and this is kind of what's being. Um, uh, uh, thought of, and uh, but I love that we start out uh, with uh, this challenge being the victory. Remember, to make a victory, a victory is always a challenge. A victory is never guaranteed. But the fact that uh, these planning, this plan is challenged by victory, that means that this plan is looking to victory. Love that. I think that's where we'll leave this uh, in this uh, drawing. And uh, let me, while I'm putting this away, if something else occurs to me, I will ask it, but um, it doesn't really. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. So you all decide what should be, uh, what another question would be. Put that in the comments. You know, this is typically where I, re typically where I recap the cards that I've laid out. There have been too many um, spreads uh, to really do that. But I uh, just want uh, everyone to know that your thoughts, uh, your energy that you're putting out into the universe, if you're uh, putting out negative energy, you listen, you're not just affecting yourself. You're not just affecting these two families. You're affecting these five children. So let's make it a point to put out some good, positive energy when we think about this issue. And hopefully that'll help things come to a nicer, happier, clearer, uh, fruitful conclusion. I don't know. That's what I think. Thanks. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.